Hey everybody, it's Nathaniel Avila reporting from Dallas County, and who am I here with? Hi, it's Anya again. Hello. So what are you what are we doing today? What is what is what are we doing? We are talking about Lonnie Zamora. Yes, the Lonnie Zamora incident. So what do you know about this? Um just a small little UFO sighting that was happening in New Mexico, I believe. Mm-hmm. But other than that, not necessarily alive, you know, just things coming down from the sky to refuel, repopulate at the nearest gas station and going back to their, you know, normal destination. You think you just a stop. You think UFOs run on gas? No. It, not the UFOs, the people. They might need, the, the aliens, they might need to stop, stretch your legs, you know. Long uh-huh. road trips, you need to stretch your legs a little bit. Okay. So let's go into the Lonnie Zamora incident, which was an alleged UFO sighting that occurred on April 24th, 1964, near Socorro, New Mexico. When Socorro police officer Lonnie Zamora claimed he saw two people beside a shiny object that later rose into the air accompanied by a soaring flame. So let's get in on this. So on April 24th, 1964, at approximately 5.45 p.m., Socorro Police Radio Dispatcher Nep Lopez received a radio call for, from Sergeant Lonnie Zamora reporting a possible motor vehicle accident. Zamora advised Lopez that he would be checking the car down in the Arroyo, which is like a dry creek. Um, So shortly after, Lopez received another radio call from Zamora asking Lopez to look out the window to see if he could see an object. When Lopez asked Zamora to describe it, Zamora said it looked like a balloon and requested New Mexico State Police Sergeant Chavez meet him at his location. When Chavez arrived, he asked Zamora what the trouble was, and Zamora led him to examine some burning bush, or some burning brush. Uh, When other police officers arrived, they noted patches of smoldering grass and brush. So what do you think about that? Well, I mean... If you don't exactly know what's outside your window, and the only thing that you can really say well it looks like a balloon to me and you out in the country because you don't see much Mm things then it's a balloon you know those pesky air balloons come out all the time so you think it's a balloon nah no you don't think it's a balloon but i mean no i mean it could have been any type of ufo i mean ufo does describe as an unidentified flying object yeah, I think UFO was recently re. I think they rebranded recently. They have they go by a different acronym now. Let me see UFO new acronym. You mean after all of these years, UFO is not the proper term? What is this? Is the planet being lit by new information? Yeah, it's called UAPs now. That's what they're called now. UAPs. What does UAP stand for? This new acronym. Uh, Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon. Now we're just in areas. It's not an object anymore. It's just things that happen in a place. Yep. They're taking all the fun out of everything now. uh Darn these people that are woke. They're woke. Have you heard that thing with uh, that about uh, what Lovato said, Demi Lovato said? How she thought the word term alien was... Uh, discriminatory toward aliens. I can't really. I mean, technically, the alien can be noted for several different things, but I'm pretty sure the aliens that she was thinking was not the aliens they were talking about. Yeah. But anyway, I apologize to any aliens out there. We did not mean to call you aliens. I'm sorry for offending you. Okay, I'm sure they forgive you. 
<laughs> so, uh, Zamora told authorities that he was pursuing a speeding car south of Socorro, New Mexico, when he heard a roar and saw a flame in the sky to southwest, some distance away. Possibly a half mile or a mile, believing a local dynamite shack might have exploded. So Zamora said he discontinued the pursuit and investigated the potential explosion. So Zamora claimed to have observed a shiny object to south about 150 to 200 yards uh, that he initially believed to be an overturned white car up on, a, up on radiator or on trunk. So the object was like aluminum. It was whitish against the Mesa uh, background, but not chrome and shaped like the letter O. Zamora claimed to have briefly observed two people in white overalls beside the object, who he later described as normal in shape, but possibly they were small adults or large kids. Zamora claimed to hear a roar and see blue and orange flame under the object, which then rose and quickly moved away. So there was that. I mean, when you can't figure out the size of someone from far away, of course there are either small, little people, or children. Mm -hmm. So let's see, let's see the actual, an actual uh, artist representation of the object that we just described. So this is what he looks, this is what it looks like. Ooh, ah. What do you think? What I mean, do you? <laughs> well, to me, all I can say is I kind of want to pump it into a field goal because it looks like a football. Yeah, because um, it was supposed to be like egg shaped. Yeah. <clears throat> and these are but, the two uh, two people. I mean, to be honest, standing next to those uh, the legs of the egg thing, those are. I mean, depending on how tall that thing actually is, I mean, they could be taller than actually small children or little people. Mm-hmm. All right. So what do you think about this whole situation that he just explained? Well, the fires are unusual, especially when everyone else gets there and it's just a smolder, dark mess of charcoal of nothingness so really it's going to buy more of the he said she said i think i saw something are you sure you haven't been drinking last night i mean you have been on duty for 24 hours yeah and, oh yeah this is a police officer too exactly how many calls could have been happening to this poor police officer in that time frame before finding this object that happened to land when mm. the aliens were stretching off their legs because it's a long road trip. So do you think that the fact that this guy was a police officer gives this incident credibility, this sighting? Not for a police officer. Police <gasps> officers folks always see lots of weird, interesting things in their lifetime for most regular humans. Sometimes after a long day of work, for anybody, anything could be seen and misconceived as anything else. Right. Or they do see it and they believe it, but their mind does not want to believe that's what they're seeing. So it just does not compute. Right. So let's see what the scientists have to say. Oh no, here we go with the scientists. I mean, yay, scientists! <laughs> so Zamora claims were investigated by governmental projects like the U.S. Air Force's Project Blue Book and civilian ufologists and have been reported in the popular press and media. Although ufology people, ufology groups consider the Zamora incident as one of the more, most credible extraterrestrial encounters on record. Several alternative explanations have been presented. So these include the testing of a lunar landing device by personnel from the White Sands missile range. What do you think? Do you think that that's what it was? 
That's interesting. You know, anything that blows up is just a gas leak that just went wrong. But <laughs> having the scientists think that it's actually something that happens, that it actually happens, and be on the side of us folks that believe just in a scientist access, hmm, mm. that's kind of suspicious as I can get. They mm. never agree with us. Yeah, so it's either the uh, lunar landing device or it was a prank perpetrated by students from a nearby New Mexico tech. Of course. If it's not something that's already happened in the past, then it has to be those darn kids <laughs> always messing up with the police people. You know what? Stop doing your art projects and things of unweirdness on our property. <laughs> Get off our lawn. Get off our lawn. So regarding the latter explanation, when pre the then president of New Mexico Tech, Sterling Colgate, supported the idea that students from the school were responsible for the hoax, and additionally wrote that the object observed by Zamora was a candle in a balloon, uh, not sophisticated. So UFO skeptic Stuart Campbell has suggested that Zamora observed was most certainly a mirage of the star cannabis. So, there was that. Man. You know, I always forget there are U.S. I'm sorry, they're not UFOs anymore. U.A. P's. U.A.P's. U.S. U.A.P's experts now. <laughs> to know that uh, this does not sound familiar and it's not in the regular pathways of what an alien would do. Oh, shoot. I can't use alien anymore either. Darn it! I'm all necessarily screwed up. You have to say E.T.'s. E is it E.T.? But is E.T. properly? Because, I mean, if E.T.'s really exist, since they were both in Star Wars and had their own movies, they are their technical own species. So, technically, E.T. is a different species than the rest of the aliens. Oh, then I don't know. <laughs> so, do you think it was a mirage of the cannabis star? I mean, it could be a mirage for it, but to be honest, I mean, Earth is such a nice place in the middle of our solar system that I really feel like they just stop to stretch their legs, maybe pick up a cow for a snack and, you know, move on. They eat raw cow. I'm pretty sure they cook it under whatever fire that's best for them. And it might not necessarily be cow. They might not eat the meat of the cow. They could just be eating the hide. You don't know. Okay. The nose, the brain, the heart, the lungs. They might use it all. They could be Native American aliens. They oh. eat the whole cow. They eat the whole cow? So, like, in 1966... The president of the Socorro County's Chamber of Commerce, Paul Riddings, proposed developing the site of Zamora's claimed UFO encounter to make it more accessible to tourists. So consequently, stone walkways and steps were built into the arroyo from the mesa top, with a rock walkway circling the supposed landing site that included some wooden benches. However, these were built approximately a quarter mile from the actual site of Zamora's alleged sighting due to local rumors that the original site was contaminated by radioactivity. In 2012, Socorro City officials Ravi Boxer and, uh, yeah, Basquier and Pat Salome commissioned local artist Erica Burley to paint a mural in Spillway Fencing Park. Oh, Spillway Facing Park Street to commemorate Zamora's alleged UFO sighting. So Zamora became so tired of the subject that he eventually avoided both ufologists and the Air Force, taking a job managing a gas station. And he died on November 2nd, 2009 in Socorro from a heart attack. He was 76 years old. Thus ending the story of the Lonnie Zamora incident. So. Oh, that's kind of sad. To to be kind of made fun of or be put on a high pedestal for seeing what you can that you get so sick and tired of 
it becoming a thing that you decide to retire from your job and work at a gas station and then die of a heart attack? Yep. That's kind of sad ending for the poor thing. <laughs> so let's see what the let's see what the mural looks like. Ooh, the mural. Okay. One second. One second. We're getting there. Okay, there it is. Do you see it? Uh, yeah. What do you think? It definitely has some potential. I feel kind of, I mean, getting your name put in there and now you're mem memorialized in this uh, sighting that happened in your police uniform and you have your, I mean, it is very cool and I'm glad that they're embracing their uh, newfound exploits to the super, uh, to the unknown coming into their town. But the poor guy, I mean, he, he just really wanted to forget the whole rest of the thing. <laughs> so it's like a 50-50. It's like you saw it, you tried to comment, then you tried to forget it as if it was regular day and no one will let you forget it. Mm -hmm. But you got to get that nice tourism money. Yeah. I mean, the tourist money kind of can go either way. You either embrace that you were the person involved and you could make money by telling your story and exaggerating the events of that night with each telling while you make money on the side because people will come in here from the actual officer that saw such a thing. But the poor thing just really did want to be known for that any longer. Mm -hmm. So you think the this story had a tragic ending? I feel like it had a tragic ending for the poor officer. Yeah. Would you ever want to go visit <laughs> visit Socorro, New Mexico to see the site? Maybe. That seems like a nice road trip thing to do. You know, mm -hmm. make my way along, stop there for a little bit, stretch my legs on this long trip, go to the next place or the UFO sighting. You know, do a Stop and go UFO sightings on my way. Mm-hmm. So what do you think about this entire situation as a whole? As a whole, I really feel like it's a possibility. Well, it could have happened. It happened to a guy and, you know, you report it. You try to make sense of it. And those who believe it won't leave you alone about it, but others don't believe it at all. And you can be, to an extent, the laughing stock of your place that you're just done with everything. Mm -hmm. So, I really feel like it happened, and he just took it the one way that it didn't benefit. He didn't want to remember or think about it again. Mm-hmm. So, do you do you believe he actually saw aliens and UFO? I personally believe that it's a possibility that he did see the events that unfolded that he told people about. And when they were spotted, they tried to get out of Dodge and left behind some burning bushes and plants and... Once it went out, it probably never came back to life in those areas because of the type of fuel they left. And now it's a sight to just be like, oh, look, look what's happening. Look at this. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, that's pretty much the story of the Lonnie Zamora incident. Uh, a pretty interesting story with a tragic ending that led to the death of Lonnie Zamora. After he was kind of like, he kind of got fed up with the entire story. And he kind of probably wished he never saw it. 
He probably either wish he never saw it or he wish he never reported it. Oh, yeah. It kind of comes to question about how many of these sightings happened, but they were never reported. True. Mm -hmm. Or it's kind of like ghost sightings. You know, there's a, there's a couple of uh, taxi companies that won't let their taxi drivers go out into the middle of nowhere mm -hmm. because ghosts catch a ride and then skip out on the tab. <laughs> like, like hitchhiking ghosts from the Haunted Mansion ride in Disney World? To an extent, yes. Okay. But, yeah, they have in their policy, do not pick up anyone on certain road, roads areas. Mm -hmm. Because it's known to have ghost travelers that want you to take them to a specific point, but disappear before you get there. Whoa. Isn't that freaky? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that was the story of the Lonnie Zamora incident. And the, I've been Nathaniel Avila. And I'm Hong Yu. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to A Vision Podcast, home of Wacky Talkies, The Kingdom, Evil Exists, and many more.